Here is uh, the next uh, algorithm, first, which is our shortest job first. This is the second algorithm. The first algorithm is FCFS, first come, first serve. Now you have SJF, or you can also call it as SJN, shortest job first. So uh, the shortest will be uh, the shortest will be configured to be first, then following the longest. Uh, it is also not non preemptive if uh, this one is preemptive. Uh, forgot already. So you need to know uh, whether it is preemptive or non preemptive for the all algorithm because that one is very important, especially for uh, question part A, multiple choice. You can be asked, okay, uh, which of the following is a non preemptive algorithm? So you have a five algorithm. So you need to know which one is non preemptive, which one is a preemptive. And it can be also called a shortest job first or shortest job next. Associate with each process length of its next CPU, uh, your burst or cycle time, we use this length to set, uh, schedule for the process with the shortest time. <clears throat> and SJF is optional, which is, uh, it means uh, going to give you a minimum average waiting time. If you compare to first come, first serve, uh, compared to this, SJF will be given you much more, uh, it, uh, it's guaranteed to give you the minimum. For FCFS, it doesn't guarantee you because sometimes you have a huge uh, average waiting time because you consider which one is come first, isn't it? So that's why your average time sometimes is huge. But for this algorithm, it's going to guarantee you to have the minimum average waiting time for a given set of processes. So this is all the questions that might be uh, questioning comparing to your uh, algorithm SJF. Okay, uh, example here. Example number one. You have four process you have four process and you were given with the bus time already and you will need to draw uh, similar to your fcfs which is you need to draw the scheduling chart but for this one you're going to see that you will follow the shortest to the longest if fcfs it will consider if let's say f uh, p1 is come first you're going to tag this so it will be six uh, following let's say p2 p2 is eight so you're going to have until 14 and 17 17 uh, 7 21 and lastly 20. okay this one is first come first serve if you compare to the uh, a process p1 p2 p3 p4 but now you look into the scheduling chart for stf you look into which one is the shortest. Now we know that first the shortest is P, uh, this one is one, the shortest, P4. Second, we have uh, P1. Third will be our P3. And last one is our P2. So you can draw uh, from 0, P4, and then it's going to have 
three verse time cycle and another one is six after that seven and here is eight so from here you can also uh, refer to this scheduling chart and then you're going to come up with the uh, similar also you're going to see where uh, what is the waiting time for each process you find the waiting time this is first time first for p4 uh, p4 is 0 p1 is 3 p3 is 9 uh, p2 is 16 so p4 is 0 p1 is 3 p3 is 9 and p2 is 16 after that you're going to add it all together and you average with 4 why 4 because you have a 4 process the calculation is similar with your fcfs only when you want to apply into the scheduling chart there it is a different after that you're going to do a turn turn around time so here when you have a turn around your p2 will be 24 your p3 will be 16 your p1 will be 1 and p4 will be 3 so p4 3 Mm, P1 9, P3 16, and P2 is 24. Again, similar also, you're going to add together and you're going to average with how many process you have? 4. So you're going to divide with 4. Then this will be your waiting average waiting time. This is average turn around time. AWT AWT ATT I think you also know this is the short form for what and your waiting time your turnaround time the unit must be in millisecond next example still under SJF or SJN so you were given with uh, another four process job A, B, C and D arrive at time T0 with different uh, CPU bus there. Uh, this one is CPU bus, okay. This one is bus, bus time. This one is different. So please take note, this one is quite similar to... Uh, this question wait where is it exercise one compared to this uh this one uh, okay example two also similar for example two this is the different cpu bus time and for example one it directly give you uh right similar different bus time which one is the first time? And another one is CPU first time. Oh, uh, maybe it's going to directly give you the table. So you need to see CPU first time. Or another one is your first time. Now here is give you back to our question. CPU bus, calculate the average waiting time and also average turn around time. This one is normal question and it's already asked you which algorithm that you need to know. If you can, this question can be changed uh, with different algorithm. It can be whatever algorithm the question want to be, 
and it must be also can uh, similar. Uh, Molly, I copy this one. Eh, dah ada kat bawah tu, no. It's already there. Okay, so uh, this table will be given. <coughs> this table will be given. So, you know already this is the first time. And you are having the job A, job B, job C, job D. And you need to memorize that S, J, N. SJF SJF will ask you to see which one is the shortest first so this will be the shortest second will be this one uh, third and fourth mm -hmm. so let's draw our uh, scheduling chart so first our job B job B will be done first which is 0 until 2 after that is our job D, which is another 4. And third is 5. And another one. Lastly, your job C will be another 6. So how you need to know first of all, we're going to find the waiting time. Waiting time and turn around time. Okay, waiting time and turn around time. First of all, you can see waiting time for job B will be zero. After that, job D will be two. Job A will be six and job C will be eleven. Your turn around. Job C will be 17. Job A will be 11. Job D will be 6. And job B will be 2. So this is how you're going to <coughs> find each of the waiting time and also your turnaround time. And similar as usual, you just need to add all together and average 4. You get the answer for average waiting time and average turnaround time. Easy, right? This is a normal mathematical. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, a job B finish in its given time, which is two cycle. Job D finish uh, in its given uh, plus, plus uh, four plus two six. This one I think uh, a standard mathematical, so no need for me to explain more in this one. This is how you're going to draw your scheduling chart. So here there is another explanation. You can see in term of later on, you need to have the uh, some sort of equation here for the formula to calculate the average. So as you can see uh, just now, you add you add it all together, A, B, C, and then you get the average waiting time. Uh, plus 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 here all turn around you're going to get the average turn around after that <clears throat> you can see uh, you have the first job first job is B it's going to appear four times how do you think that is going to be appear four times which is from here job B if you want to do job D it's need to do the job B first. If you want to do a job A, you need to do job B first. If you want to do job C, 
job B will be doing first. And you want to job uh, do the job B. That's why it's mentioned four times. Job B, job B, job B, job B. Appearance in a time. And then, it's mentioned also that a second job which is job D. Job D itself, one time, when you want to run the job D. If you want to run the job B, of course, you need to run the job D first. So, another one more time. If you want to run the job B, uh, job C, sorry, you also need to run job D first. So, you have three times. After that, uh, you can also have another third job, which is job A. For job A, uh, when you want to run it, it is one time. And job C, when you want to run job C, you need to run also job A first. Then you can run job C. That's why two times. And lastly, job C is only one time. So this one is just a conclusion. But uh, you have several ways for you to calculate. This is a normal calculation. This is a normal calculation you will get. But there is another way for you to get. Which is by using their own burst time only. No need for you to find the waiting time. For this equation, you add on all with the waiting time, also your turnaround time. But for this solution, later on for the formula, you're going to follow the theory. How many times this job are doing or running? Then you're going to come up with the solution, which is, you can see B. B compared to the Okay, B, uh, you can see B, what is B? B having a 2 CPU bus. That's why you're going to put B first and then you put 2. Why it's going to multiply with 4? Because there will be 4 times that you need to uh, run the job B before you can uh, finish. So this is time 4. After that, job D, 3 times. Job A, 2 times. Job C, 1 time. 2, 4, uh, A, 5, and 6. When you do this equation, you're going to get similar. Mana dia punya answer tadi? Okay, you're going to get similar uh, for turn around time. No need for you to find out the turn around. So you're going to get a similar value. Millisecond. So this is the formula. Uh, T means uh, time. Uh, T means your process. First process. Which one is the first process? And how many CPU bursts that first process are having? And how many time that you're going to have? If you have n process, then you're going to have four. Uh, you have n process, you're going to have n. If you have three process, you're going to have three. So n is a process. Total number of process, number of job in a queue or a process. After that, uh, if let's say you have four process just now, uh, four job altogether, and then it's going to be four minus one, four minus two, four, uh, four minus three. Eh, this is n one. 
supposedly is going to be uh, 4 minus 2 is 2 and then it's going to be 1. You can also minus 3 and etc. Because we don't know what is the value just now here until you're going to get 1. So this is the conclusion for you to find the average uh, turnaround time for your SF, SJF. SJF and SJN, you also having a differentiation uh, between uh, others uh, algorithm uh, which is the advantages and disadvantages. The advantages is easy implementations in batch environment. So CPU time requirement known in advance. Does not work well in interactive system. Optimal algorithm. All jobs are available at same time. CPU estimation. I think this one is advantage. If two process are having the CPU burst time cycle. So if okay, if you are having a similar, then you cannot use this SJF. But <clears throat> when you are having, let's say, for this statement, I have process A. B, C, D. Uh, I'm going to follow a sequence. A will come first. B will come second. C will come third. D will come fourth. Last one. This will be uh, one, two, two, three. Okay. I assume like this for the CPU time. Uh, and then you're going to use the SJN. So that's why I'm going to do the job D first. After that, I was confused which one should I use. So in this statement, if it having a similar or same burst time, cycle time, like this, you need to use the FCFS. Means that comparing to these two, this coming in first so i'm going to do job a first and then job c after that of course my job b because it is much more bigger okay understood now there is another exercise still we're going to use a similar sjn algorithm uh here you have one two three four job a job b job c job d a, B, C, D arrive at time T0 with different CPU bursts in a millisecond. At T2, another job X, Y arrive with it on CPU burst time here. So calculate the average waiting time and average turnaround time assuming you're going to use the SJN algorithm. So you need to apply in term of the, uh, I think for turnaround, uh, in this question, it's going to give you uh, following the equation just now. Eh, no. Uh. Oh, it is still manual. It's okay, we follow the manual way. From here, it just want to make you a bit confused. I'm going to copy again this table to next pages. Eh, kenapa dia tak boleh nak kecil? Adai. As long as you can see 
the numbers of CPU bus. Okay, uh, following uh, what mentions just now, uh, this one will be arrived first. This one will be arrived first. But you can see here, you have are uh, having the smallest uh, value of CPU bus is your job uh, Y. Job Y and job uh, second one is job B. But it's mentioned already that <coughs> you're going to have the first one within this process. So this one, which one is the uh, the smallest first? After you already having the first, then you can consider next. If not, you cannot just proceed with this. Okay, this is the first. You cannot do that. Because first thing, you're going to do something here first. Then you're going to compare with each other which one is the smallest. Okay, let's see. Uh... At the T0, which job is the smallest? It is a B. After that, after you are already done with your job B, then you can consider the next arriving time. Because the rest is waiting, suddenly these two jobs also are uh, waiting to take over. But S, J, and S, JF will be considered the shortest. So from all of these, this one will be second, this will be third, uh, fourth, fifth, and this will be the last one. So following like this, you're going to have next is job Y. And then X D A C. So here you're going to have a. Okay, this one is a total of your CPU bus time. And it mentions also here after your T2, you can also consider another process including your X, Y, X, and Y. So here it's just a uh, pick the shortest and following the rest. Oops. Basically, it is just a similar things that what I did just now. Next, you're going to have the similar things. You can do it manually like that for the average turnaround. Job B is 0, job Y is 2, job X is 3, job D is 6, job A is 10, job C is 15. And turn around, job C is 21, job A is 15, job D is 10, X is 6, Y is 3, and job B is 2. This is a manual, manual way. But you can also use the equation just now to calculate the average waiting uh, average average turn around so you can try to do and apply it but here it shows you in terms of manual manual way waiting time for b uh, a is 10 B is 0, C is C, where is C? 15. D will 6. X will be 3. And Y will be 2. Average uh, turnaround time. 20, e, 15. V 2. C twenty one D ten X six Y three. So you add it all together, 
and you average with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 6 so you're going to get the average waiting time average turnaround time okay so it's quite simple right <clears throat> Why over here? Just now I did already for job. We have three. Okay, because for this part we are doing after that, after T two. After T two which is after your job B. After your job B is done. So this one is as a normal waiting time, like a C, uh, A here, it is 10. And then uh, B is zero. After that, you have C, 15. And D is six. When you have another conditions, another next uh, process will be coming in after each of these process are, uh, are done. So you need to see how many times that is have. So let's say over here we have the job X. The uh, waiting time should be is 3. And Y waiting time should be is 2. But you need to consider just now this waiting time supposedly when they first come because this one all of these they are already coming in uh how okay this is uh machines your computer or pc you start already a b c d at zero second let's say at zero second you already push with them like this so they need to wait starting at zero second. After that, let's say you already done your job B. Two second. So another process is coming in including the XY. XY waiting time just start after that. That's why you need to deduct with this. This one, it is not fixed. This is uh, going to be changed later on following the first job that you have done. If it is a 3, if it is 3, then you need to minus with 3. If it's 4, it's minus 4 and etc. So here, this is your waiting time. Just now, I just assume it's to be one time altogether. Cannot because supposedly this enter after a few seconds. So, it is not waiting at the beginning of zero second. Okay, similar also, you can see on the turn around. Basically, it is a similar just now, the value. But, it's wait after the first job just now is two. First time, that's why you not need to minus two. Then you follow the exactly similar calculation. Okay, so let's we proceed to another algorithm. I think that one, uh, all the algorithm are having a different way how they going to pick which process that they they going to run, but the rest is also similar. Waiting time, turnaround time, average time, uh, average turnaround time. That is the things that you need to find out. We are having uh, another algorithm. The algorithm will be our shortest reminding time first. Wow, quite long. R S R T S R T F. Now compared to the First come, first serve, uh, SJF. These two is non-preemptive. 
but now you can see this SRT is printed version. And processor allocate a job closest to the competitions. Plaintiff is never job has shorter completion time. Plaintiff if never job has shorter completion time. So example, you were given here four processes. Uh, process arrive time. Arrive time I think is here. It's teranjak already. Okay, this is the example that given. So you can see, uh, no, 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 no. Let me change the place. Eh, tak boleh. Tahu ni dia pergi. Okay, this much more clear. Okay, you have a process one, two, three, four, ever uh, arriving time. So you are having a different arriving time, which means that this is coming first. This is coming uh, after f uh, one second. Uh, P three coming after two second, and P four coming after three second. So it is not uh, been pushed or start similar at like 3, T0 to all together. <clears throat> and it shows here their burst time. They already give. P1 is 8. P2 is 4. P3 is 9. And lastly, your P5. Eh, P4 is 5. So how you're going to draw your scheduling chart is slightly different. Because this is non printive and it mentions that uh, process allocate the job closest to complete, uh, completion and it's not uh, if never job has a shortest, might means that you did not have any a shortest completion time. You're going to use the preemptive. And how you're going to draw is over here. First, it's going to arrive first. This one at the zero second. So you're going to have a burst time eight. Supposedly, go, you're going to have eight burst time. First, you are starting your P1 here. After that, at the P2, uh, uh, at the time 1, you're going to have P2. P1 is not yet finished. Because you're going to see it's having a burst time is 8. And after that, at uh, arrive. You can see your P1 also are having four pers. So it's directly over here. It try to finish until five. But supposedly your P3 are having uh, at second two. Your P3. But it's not yet start. This one is not finished at eight bursts. Supposedly it's going to be until eight. Why you can see that it's going to be start after that also. It's slightly not similar with another two SJF and also FCF, SC, FS. So here you draw the P2 now at the arrival of one. And then you are having the S4 example, okay? Let's say I have until 8 altogether. I draw P1 first. P1 starting at the 0 until 8. 
And then I have at the second, I have P2, oops, sorry, until 4, starting at 2. And then uh, at P3, uh, at 2 here, I have until 9. This one is P3 starting at 2 and lastly I have P4 starting at 3 until 5. 3 and I have all together until 5 supposedly it's going to be similar here. At the P1 finish. So supposedly it's going to be like this. P1 having a uh, all uh, until verse 8 and then P2 start at 1 and then it's having all together until uh, 5. P3 until 9 because it start at 2. Sorry, 2 until 9 it will be 11. And lastly our P4 it should be from 3 until 5 it will be 8 so it's finished similar with the P1 so how come you can draw <coughs> like this to configure whether uh, it's going to be applied as SRT SRTF so P1 here starting at 0 second one is going to have P2 at 1 you're going to finish until here only and then uh, you have supposedly at second, uh, second here, you're going to have P3, P3 until the rest of 11. And then you have at third here, you have your P4, okay, until 8. So all together, actually, it is a uh, inside here all together until the rest, until it's finished. So like P2 here is already finished here. That's why you can see, okay, this one is finished. Basically, it is starting at 1. But inside here, there is a P3 and it is starting also P4. But after that, you can see P4 will be continuous with this. And in behind also, there is P1 until P1 is finished. And then after all finish, P1 and P4 will be finished together here. And it will continue with our P3. How to calculate the waiting time is <coughs> when you have uh, one... 0 and then it's 4, four uh, 5 here because it is 4 altogether and it will be also having uh, 5 supposedly it's going to be this one is 8 until 11 supposedly it's until 11 P3 similar Sembilan, eh, 11 ke 10? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, 11. Supposedly, it's going to be 11. Uh, why is 10? Okay, let me check why it's 10. Uh, 10 minus 1. Because of it's starting at 1. 1 minus 1 over here. And then we are having... 17 17 minus 2 uh, supposedly it is after that after the P4 uh, after the P, P4 and P1 is finished it's going to be continued with P3 and then we are having another one our 1, 2, 3 after that we are having a P2 just now P2 which will be end at 5. 
supposedly it is 5 here and then it's going to be minus with the uh, 3 5 uh, minus 3 is will be 2 you're going to have 2 here and then you're going to have 15 here will be 0 and this will be 9 okay this is the average waiting time for the four process here so how you're going to calculate this is depend on the uh, total bus including the arrival time just now for the SJN and FCFS is going to be only looking at the bus time only looking at the bus time uh, we see also another example so it must be more clear for you because this one is I will double check with this value I think I'm go also confused just now about this value it is um, uh, supposedly it's going to be 11 but it is 9 but, but it is 10 let's see another example first here you are having a job ABC which is similar for this example and then you are having the burst time it's give the burst burst time and also your arrival time which is given also here your arrival time is zero zero for job a uh, job b is one job c is two and job d is three so you're going to do uh which which is basically similar to the previously but this one is much more clear you're going to see that your job a will start at zero and then job b will start at your one here job c will start at your uh, second time and lastly your job d but it is not going to be directly because this one I also need to look into the first time. So you are having this job A all together, it will be six. But you only have one here. You're going to continue another five after all other job sequence. Follow first here at the job B. Job B only one also here. You only have three. So another one after another job. Job B here will be, uh, job C here will be another one second. You just run first one. You have another or you don't have another one. So you already finish your job C. Job C is finished already. Then you're going to continue back first with the previous job to finish it which one is the shortest you're going to have the another one is b you have two left this one another two after you finish this you can see which one is the smallest this one is not this one is already zero so compared to D and A, you have D is much smaller. That's why you're going to start with 4 first. Then you're going to finish the job A, which is uh, left 5 cycle more. So you're going to involve with all the process. You can see here, first of all, you're going to have A. But after a, suddenly you will be pushed with the B you will be pushed with the B so you're going to start another one second one second and then you will be pushed with C but you can see here C is already finished at 2 so you're not going to consider directly to the next for the job D because this one you can see oh Suddenly it finished. Before it finished, uh, similar to your previously, before it finished, it will be thinking where I'm going to go next. You don't know that this one will be coming at 3 seconds. 
because before you finish you know already okay i only have a uh, one cycle so before i finish just now you can see uh, last time you are having a uh, process a uh, you already finished by your uh, b is block b is already finished before a finish so supposedly a will be continue with b but in this process when a already start a already think okay after this i'm going to go where you check b is already blocked so cannot that's why you go to the c if you still remember the example last time so here it's also applying is similar c will be thinking after this i'm going to go where uh, who going to uh, change my job because I'm going to finish. So you don't know that C, uh, D will be coming at 3 seconds. So that's why you go directly to next first. Which is you're going to consider which one is the shortest. So you're going to have a B if you compare B and A. Then actually... Uh, D will be pushing. Oh, okay. Suddenly you know, then you're away. There is D. So you, that's why you can see you're going to compare D and A after job B is finished. After B finish, then you will say, okay, I'm going to finish later on uh, two cycle more. And after this, who going to replace me? So you know that they're already waiting for D and A. So D will be tagged first because this is just four and continues with another one is job A having a another five. So uh, each job is interrupt after one CPU cycle. When you have, you can see after uh, one CPU cycle, you're going to be interrupt with another job that are waiting with the last cpu remaining so you're going to see which one is the last just now i mentioned okay but why you did not do d just now although you've been interrupt at three seconds also with the d as mentioned here you're going to after interrupt after one cpu cycle you can see after your CPU, one CPU cycle, you're going to be interrupt. And you're going to pick the last CPU timing around a reminder. But for the D just now, at 3, it will be interrupt. But before that, D is not available. That's why it will think, okay, uh, I'm going to finish my cycle. Because I have only one burst time, one cycle only. So after this, who going to go next? Of course, it's going to consider which one is the smallest between A and B. So B is the smallest left burst time, which is left uh, CPU time. That's why you're going to, uh, to do B first, comparing to the A. After B, while B are doing a job, okay, I'm going to have only another two cycle. After this, we am going to... Uh, which, which job will be replacing me? So you need to consider the last CPU timing. So here, here job A is printed by job B because job B has less CPU timing, uh, time reminding. You can see here, first of all, when you are uh, starting with the job A, Arriving 1, you are having 6 minus 1 equal to 5. Then you can see you're going to be involved with the job B. And job B are having a smaller, uh, less CPU time, which is 3. You're going to start with your job B. One cycle. One cycle. Suddenly, you're going to be also uh, preemptive by C because you're going to see this arriving time at 2. And then, this also job is have a less CPU time arrival, which is only 1. 
So you have 1 minus 1 equal to 0 later on after you finish. Then you can see here, similar also, now job B will be resumed because job C is finished. I already mentioned, right? After this finish, of course, before it finishes, going to be find out which one going to replace it. So it will pick which one? Less CPU time. Which one is less CPU? B. Uh, okay, so you're going to do the job B. After job B done, you're going to go to the job D. Why job D? Because it have a less CPU compared to job A. It is only 4 and A is 5. So you finish it and the rest it will be resumed because only left A. So it finish. So this is how you're going to do for this third algorithm SRT, SRTF. This one, is it similar? Another, another example. Oh, no. Similar example, okay. Uh, about the completion time. So, you can see here, when your job B is finished. Okay, job A, although it starts at 0, it will finish at 14. Job B, although it starts at 1, it's going to finish at 5. Job C start at 2, finish at 3. Job D start at 5, finish at 4. So you're going to calculate it. Z, uh, job A. Job A having 0 until 14. That's why you're going to 14 minus 0. And then you are having job B. Job B you're going to have from 1 until 5. So, all together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 completion timing. For job C, you're going to have only 2 until 3. 2, 3. So, you're going to have uh, completion time uh, 2 until 3. So, you're going to complete at 3. And job D will are finish at 9 from 5 until 9 so this is the completion time for each task how you going to calculate <coughs> in terms of average turn around time so turn around time the completion time of each job will be minus the arrival time so if you arrive at 0 you're going to minus 0. If you arrive at 1 uh, for B just now, you're going to... Okay, let me do. For, part, for A, it's going to be 14 minus 0. For B, 5 minus 1. For C, 3 minus 2. For D, 5. Uh, 9 minus 5 so all together <coughs> you're going to have uh, 14 and here is 4 this is 1 uh, job D job D it is oh silap 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 sorry sorry it, uh, 14 minus 0, 5 minus 1, 3 minus 2. And for job D, it's not looking at here because arrival time just now I mentioned. Job D is already arrived here but you did not uh, directly do the job D. You did not directly do the job D. It is already waiting here. It's already waiting here at uh, 3 seconds that's why supposedly it start here but you don't know you just start with the job B because it is a 
you away in the job B before job D. So you're going to run the job B. So it start at 3. That's why you get 6. And then you're going to divide with 4 to get your arriving uh, average turnaround time. And how you're going to calculate also for the average waiting time? Just now, uh, just now it is a average turnaround time. And to calculate the waiting average waiting time, you need to find the waiting time. This one is completion time. Completion time including the turnaround. And for waiting time. You need to, how much you need to wait. You start at zero. Uh, and then when you're going to start. Similar also B. You start at one. So when you're going to start. So that is the meaning of waiting time. Amount of time. Uh, if let's say for a job A and B. Amount time of job B has waiting in ready queue, which is ready state. For job A, it start at zero. You start at zero, you push with zero, and then you start at zero also. And then <clears throat> you are having stop or pause until you're going to continue again here. And that's why you're going to minus how long you're already waiting. So all together, uh, you will going to do and add here, you're going to get 8. And this is the total of waiting time for A. Similar also for part uh, job B. You start come in at the arrival 1. So at 1, but you also start at 1. That's why it's 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. After that, you are having a, you, you are having a pause here. You start again at 3. So how long you going to do and waiting? 3 minus 2 because this one you start pause. 3 minus 2, you get 1 and then this is your waiting time. You just wait one time here. You can see. If you think like manually, you just coming in at uh, one o'clock. Suddenly, uh, you start already uh, to do your job, and then you go take a break. How long you going to take a break? Let's say one minute or one hour. So you continue back. When you continue back after one hour. So this is a waiting time. Because your waiting time is directly. When you come in, no need for you to wait. You just directly do it. So this is for job B. Job C, you coming at the second. And you also directly finish. So no waiting time at all. While for the job D, you come at three. But you need to wait until you start at 5. So that's why 5. And then you minus with 3, you're going to get 2. So this is the average waiting time for this uh, process. Okay, this one is uh, for the algorithm your SJN, SJF because this one is preventive. I think this one is already uh, familiar because it's not too hard for you to do the SJN. You can try to do this example. Okay, this one is uh, similar also the advantages and disadvantages for your third for your third uh, algorithm, SRT or SRTF.
Okay, often used in the batch environment, cannot Im uh, implement in the interactive system. So this is disadvantages. Involve more overhead than so this is also disadvantages. So because of this are uh, having disadvantages, you have another solution for another algorithm. So another algorithm showing that you are having a round robin. Normally you are <coughs> heard about round robin also not only in the computing. Uh, sometimes you are playing around with the round robin uh, in a game. So also similar also in your computer uh, in terms of the process. So this one is similar with your SRT, SRT, which is preemptive. So it is a preemptive and used as in extensively in interactive system. So each process get a small unit of CPU time, which is time quantum, which is Q. After this time has uh, elapsed, uh, the process is preemptive and added to the end and ready queue. Going to use also your FCFS. It's going to apply also. Time qu quantum size is uh, crucial to system performance. Varies from 100 millisecond to 1 to 2 seconds. So if let's say there are n process, might be you have two process, three process in a ready queue, and at the time uh, of quant uh, the time of quantum is Q, then the process get one divide with n of the CPU time uh, in shrunk of the most of Q time unit at one. So no process wait more than n minus one. So timer interrupt every quantum to schedule that process. So you can see here in these sentences, normally you're going to plan your next schedule. That's why it's happened just now in your job D here. Similar also, uh, Last time, I think, uh, module 3, uh, the example. In job, <coughs> CPU burst is uh, more than time quantum. So, what will happen if your job, uh, CPU burst more than time quantum, job printing and place at the end of the ready queue. Information save in PCB. While if your CPU burst less than time quantum, so you uh, you need to consider these two job finish and also interrupt by your input up output request. Why you need to do this uh, round robin? Because it is efficient depend on the time quantum size and in relative to average your CPU versus quantum to large large than most your CPU bus so algorithm reduce to your FCFS scheme so it's going to be relate back to your first count first serve if the quantum is too large but if quantum too small, so context switching uh, a cure, which is job education, slow down, overhead dramatically increase. So here there is a several example. This example is quite long. Uh, can we have a break of uh, five minutes and then we go to this example, okay? Can or not? <laughs>
Alright doktor, can can. Okay.
Okay, class. Let's we continue. Uh, we have on uh another ten minutes. Okay, I'm going to continue with the example for the round robin <coughs> just now. Okay, for round robin, uh, it's slightly similar also, but I think this one is more easier compared to the previous one. Because you already been given with the totals of quantum. So every, every uh, process here is going to follow the time quantums that given. So it's going to be uh, every quantum, it will be passed to the next. It will be passed to the next following the total process. Okay, let's say here you have process 1. 24, process 2, 3, process 3, 3. You need to remember each should be 4. Unless you have fewer, then you need to follow the total of first you are half or left. Okay, first you're going to follow a sequence. Okay, you're going to follow a sequence quite similar to your FCFS. First you're going to do the P1. P1, you're going to do until 4 cycle. So, burst time. 4 burst time. So, from 0 until 4. Then, you're going to stop and consider to hand over to next process. So, you hand over to next process. Supposedly, it will be 4. But, you only have total is 3. That's why you continue until 3. After that, <clears throat> you are uh, you hand off to P3. P3 also 3. That's why you also continue until 3 only. After that, you can see P2, P3 is finished. Only left your P1. You cannot directly finish it all in one time because you need to divide it into quantum, quantum. So now you are having 20 minus 4. All together you have another 20. So you're going to divide 4, 4, 4 until 5 times. P1, 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 P1. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. That is under your round robin. After that, you can see when you already draw the shadowing chart there. You can have the arrival. Uh, okay, you were given with another example. This one is uh, you draw the uh, shadowing time. Okay, you have another example here. You were given with also four. Please remember you're going to do uh, depending on the quantum that given. You can see it's already mentioned here 4 millisecond. And uh, job sequence is A, B, C, D. You need to use round robin algorithm. After A, you're going to hand off to B. After B, you're going to hand off C. After that to D. And it will repeat the process. Okay, it will repeat the process for four, four, four. First of all, let's we do the uh, A first. How long are we going to do? Only for uh, quantum, four millisecond for job A. And it's going to hand off to your B. B, how long are you going to do? Four also. So it's already finished. And after B is going to go to the C. How much you going to do? 4. So you have another 5 more. And you hand off to your D. How long you going to do? 4 times. Then you will continue to A. A how long you going to do? Four times. 
for minus 4 is equal to 0. So it's already finished. Then B finished already. You go directly to C. C you have 5 minus 4. You have another one. So you do 4 first. And you hand off to D. D only left 1. So you just do 1. And you go back to the C to finish one cycle. Okay. So after you have the scheduling cycle chart, it's easier for you to calculate the waiting time and also turn around time. So waiting time. Okay, so waiting time here, this one is what? <laughs> so waiting time here, you can see, you're going to start at 0 for A. Okay, your arrival time is also 0. It's already given you arrival time is 0. And you're going to complete your uh, job A at 20. This is your completion time. For job B, you start at uh, your arrival time is 1. You start at 4. And going to finish at 8. This is your completion time. But you're going to start at 1. So your waiting time is equal to 7. After that, uh, C. C is uh, arrived at 2 seconds. Your completion time is 26. So, your waiting, uh, waiting time that you, uh, until you turn around and so on, because you're going to do back and forth, you're going to do 26 minus 2. Because this is your arrival, so you're going to get 24. And uh, D, finish at 25, you arrive at 3, you're going to minus with 3, going to get 22. This is your turnaround time. How are you going to get turnaround time? When you complete and when you arrive. Complete and arrive to get your turnaround time for your round robin. While for your average waiting time, you need to see uh, slightly uh, there is several things because you have a break in between. In between, let's say example job A. This one is similar to previous algorithm. You can see here, you start at 0. So, no waiting time for A. Start at 0, arrive at 0. No waiting time, 0 minus 0. After that, you stop at 4. And you need to wait until 16. Then you start. So, 16 minus 4. 16 minus 4, you're going to get 12. Because this is the longest or duration for waiting time for job A. For job B, for job B, you arrive at one second. At one second here, you already arrived, but you did not start. So you need to wait how long? Four minus one. Four minus one. 3 seconds you are waiting. And after that, you finish. You didn't do any job yet uh, for B. So, no other waiting time. For job C, you arrive at 2. Second, you already arrive. But you will start at 8. So, how long you going to wait? 6. After that, you stop again at 12. You start another one. 
at 20. How long you need to wait for you to start back your activities, your process? 20 minus 12, 8. Uh, <laughs> eight. And then, you're going to stop. You're going to continue it back at uh, 25. 25, uh, sorry, you stop at 24. Stop at 24, you continue back at 25. How long you need to wait? One. So you add 1, 8, 5, uh, 14, 15. So this is for C, waiting, uh, waiting time. And lastly, for D, you arrive at 3. 3 seconds, you already arrive. But you start at 12. So in between here, you're going to have uh, 9 seconds. 9 millisecond or second is depend on the equation. And then uh, you stop at 16 because you only have a four quantum only right so 16 then you can see you're going to con you're going to wait until 24 to start another job so 24 minus 16 8 so 9 and plus uh, 8 how much? So you're going to have 17. So this is how you're going to calculate waiting time. And this is your average waiting time. For your round robin. Okay. Uh, any question for the algorithm i think that one is fought ah you have another one more algorithm isn't it let me check uh we already four times one two three eight. okay we only uh have we only done until uh, supposedly just now we have another one right S and J S I forgot the name already S J N <laughs> shortest F C N another one is your S R T S R T and round robin four already. So next, we're going to continue with another scheduling algorithm. But that one, I'm going to record the video. Because later on, we're going to directly, because it's just a few slides more. Uh, after that, we're going to continue with our module 6. I will try to make a video also and we will discuss with class after Raya. Is it okay? Uh, please okay. make sure you study uh, carefully and good luck for tonight. Uh, if you have any question, you can just direct contact me, okay? I'm going to share another one more time for your QR code. And for the rest who already scanned your QR code, you can leave. <coughs> Thank you. And Salamat Hari Raya. Bye-bye. Selamat hari raya juga, Doktor. Okey, terima kasih.